In this morning's Health Watch, autism and siblings. Doctors have known for many years that autism can run in families, and now there's brand new research focusing on family history as a risk factor. And medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with the story. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Rebecca. These new findings appear in a study released this morning by the journal Pediatrics, and it suggests that the recurrence rate in siblings is much higher than previously thought. <laughs> what did you get? Wow! <laughs> When he was a baby, William Gallego showed all the signs of being a happy, healthy boy. But then his parents noticed a change. When he was about a year, I noticed that he wasn't talking at all or approaching other kids or socializing, and that was a big concern for me. I brought it up to the pediatrician who told me he'll probably catch up, but something still told me it wasn't right. Determined to find answers, Crystal Gallegos took her son to doctor after doctor. At 18 months old, William was diagnosed with autism. When his little sister Sophia was a baby, she too seemed normal and healthy. But at six months, again, there were concerning signs. She couldn't sit up on her own. Then a month or two later, we noticed she wasn't using her hands. At a year, again, no speech, no language. She wasn't imitating sounds. Turns out the Galagos' situation may not be so unique. According to a new study, siblings of an autistic child may have an increased risk of also being autistic. Our findings indicate that the, the incidence of autism or the recurrence of autism within families is at least double what we thought it was previously. Dr. Ted Hutman is one of the researchers in the study published today by the American Academy of Pediatrics. The study shows that almost 19 percent of babies born into families with an autistic child may develop the disorder. In families with two or more autistic children, the increased risk may be twofold. I think that having the information arms families and helps, will help them to make the best possible decisions that they can. The group Autism Speaks is working with the Gallegos family and others like them. It's important to get help early. Early intervention is key, and I think my children are doing so well because we had early intervention step in. It's so important to know. Jen, really what's significant about this research? A couple of things, Rebecca. Number one, this is the largest study to date that looks at families with an autistic child and the subsequent risk for future children. And also, it's done prospectively, meaning they started at one point in time and followed those families through a period of time in the future in which the diagnosis was made. So again, found the rate of autism almost double what doctors previously thought it was in families like this. And for parents with an autistic child who are considering having another, what should they know? A couple of important things. Family planning becomes important. The genetic counseling component becomes important. Not that that's the complete picture for autism, but it's certainly part of it. And then close surveillance and early intervention is key. It is so important for these children. It makes a big difference in their lives. Thank you, Jennifer Ashton. You Dr. Bet. Jennifer Ashton.